In one of my earlier videos, I explained how you can generate 20 control valves data sheets within just one minute through Permax. In this video, I will further explain how you can complete all the mechanical details of the control valves so that they are ready to send out for quote. As I explained in my previous video, it is very easy to import process data into the service conditions of the control valve data sheet. As you can see, just within seconds, I fill out process condition of two control valves. In a standard ISA control valve data sheet, there are nine sections, service conditions, which has all the process information, line, valve body, trim, actuator, positioner, switches, instrument air, and test sections. Let us first take a look at the line section. Permax automatically filled out the pipe size. If you know the pipe schedule, you can put it here. If you don't know, that's totally all right. Regarding the pipeline insulation, since we are talking about over here 115 Fahrenheit operating temperature, so it is not necessary to have the pipeline insulation. Regarding the control valve types, generally there are three kinds. One is globe, the other one is ball, and the third one is butterfly. Globe valves are primarily are the most popular control valve type. Regarding the valve size, generally speaking, control valve is one size smaller than the pipeline size, hence here we are going to put two. However, it's always a good idea to verify with your vendors. Regarding the maximum pressure and temperature, you can simply take the upstream equipment design pressure and temperature. The material, carbon steel, is sufficient most of the time. However, if you have cryogenic conditions, you might want to go with stainless steel. Connection between pipe and valves. Generally, flanges are preferred, and raised face flanges are most likely used. Since we are specifying flange, flange rating is pretty important. We are talking about 60 PSI, PSI and 115 Fahrenheit, so that ANSI 150 pounds should be sufficient. Now let's move to the trim. Regarding the valve characteristics, there are generally three kinds, equal percentage, linear, quick opening. Linear is good for most of the cases, while linear is primarily for liquid uh, level control valve and quick opening are primarily for on-off valves. Since over here we are talking about liquid level control, so we are going to choose linear. Regarding if the valve needs to be balanced or unbalanced, generally speaking, balanced valve has a smaller actuator. However, it's more expensive. That's why most of the time we use unbalanced. Actuator, three kind, pneumatic, hydraulic, electrical. Pneumatic uses instrument air to drive the actuator, while hydraulic is using a liquid, most likely it's a, some sort of oil, and electrical actuator is using a motor. Most of the time it's pneumatic. Since we're talking about a, a Control valve, so it's not an on-off valve, it is going to be a modulating valve. Regarding the instrument air supply pressure, typically it's, it is within 70 and 120 PSI gauge range. Regarding the actuator orientation, parallel to pipe or perpendicular to pipe, most of the time it's parallel to pipe to avoid any piping interference with parallel to pipe orientation. Hand wheel, most of the time, no. In case of uh, instrument air fail, that valve is going to open or close. 
In this case, we have a fail close valve, so we choose to close. And this actuator in general accepts 4 to 20 milliamps signal, with 4 milliamps equal to closed. Positioner. Two types. One is I2P, the other one is P2P. I2P stands for current to pressure. With the I2P positioner, the push positioner converts the 4 to 20 milliamps into a desired pressure, and that desired pressure is going to drive the actuator to a desired position. While P2P positioner translates a pressure into another pressure that's going to operate the actuator to the desired valve position. Most of the time, we are using I2P. With the increasing signal output, most of the valves will start to open more. And generally, a pressure gauge will be very helpful to get the user to better understand what's going on in that actuator. Switches. Switches are primarily for emergency shutdown or ESD valves. They normally they show the ESD either, either is either open or closed. Since we're talking about a control valve, we're going to ignore this section. Instrument air. In case you have a dirty instrument air, you probably want to have a filter. And also a pressure gauge will help you to regulate the instrument that supply pressure to the actuator. Regarding the leakage of the valve, normally a class 4 is sufficient. There are generally six types of uh, leakage. Class 6 might be good for ESD emergency shutdown valve, but for most of the control valve, class 4 is good enough. You are pretty much set by putting today's date and putting your name. This control valve data sheet is ready to send to vendors for quote. Thanks for watching this video. It is brought to you by Guofu Chen. More interesting topics can be found at showcase.guofuchen.com.